and boom goes the dynamite. That's how we solve the sequel murder mystery with zero queries. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive. Today's going to be a quick video uh, and I'm going to be talking about SQL and in particular uh, I found this interesting challenge online called the SQL murder mystery. Um, let me pull that up now. And so if you don't know, SQL stands for Structured Query Language. It is a domain-specific language for uh, storing and retrieving data, specifically relational data within relational databases. Uh, it's been around for almost 50 years. It was first uh, introduced in 1974, uh, and it's used very broadly across the software engineering industry uh, whenever you're storing data within a relational database management system. And so here, this is kind of a, an online challenge for learning and uh, testing out your SQL skills where they've programmed into this database uh, a bunch of information about a murder that took place. And the idea is that you would explore the different tables, use your skills to identify exactly who the murderer is. And so if we take a look at this, first they kind of start out with uh, how you would run a query to identify the different tables. So we have a crime scene report, we have a driver's license, et cetera. And then we could query within these tables to sort of see what's going on. So we could do something like select star from crime report. And that would give us some information. We have all these reports, uh, some ridiculous, some related to murder. We would need to sort of find the report that was most relevant here, join it with some of the other tables, uh, and narrow down who the different suspects were. The interesting thing about this, though, is because this site is running uh, with a SQLite database, uh, which is a specific type of SQL database that is embedded within a C library, and it's actually just stored as a file on the system. And so they transmit that file to the client. So I thought it might be fun to, rather than use the normal approach, and I highly suggest that you do, I've gone through it before, but it's a, a fun exercise to sort of test your SQL skills and see how quickly or in how few queries you can write to come up with the answer. But I thought I'd use the cheater method today. And we can actually go in here to the developer tools. Let's zoom in just a bit. Uh, and if we reload the page on the network tab, scroll down, we see that they actually transmit that SQLite database to us as the SQL murder mystery D. And so now I'll go over and we see that the way you would normally check your solution is to insert a value into the solutions table. What I realized is that there's probably a trigger on that table such that whenever you insert a value, it will check whether you are correct or not. Spell it correctly. Uh, and we see this trigger check solutions trigger. And as predicted, after we insert any row into the solution table, we're going to run it, and it is defined as in this case statement, and we convert whatever we input to hexadecimal. And if it matches this value, then we say, congrats, you found the murderer. So let's take that value and convert it back to ASCII uh, with some random converter here. We'll paste it in, say convert. Beep. Warning, spoiler alert. If you plan to solve this mystery on your own using SQL, please pause the video and do so now. Looks like Jeremy Bowers is the murderer. So let's give it a shot. Uh, da, 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 insert into solution. Click I. Ta da! Congrats, you found the murderer. However, it says, oh, there's one more uh, challenge. We want to find who is behind the murder. So, not just the person who was hired, but who did it. Luckily, our trigger has it right here in the case statement. Let's go ahead and figure that one out. Again, we just convert it from hex to ASCII, convert. Oh, looks like Miranda Priestley was our our mastermind. Do it again. Boom. Zero queries. Uh, so this was just an interesting quirk of the fact that they're using SQLite and we can inspect the database manually. Like I said, it's an interesting challenge. I highly suggest that you walk through uh, the crime scene report, do the necessary joins, narrow it down, and try to find those things out. Uh, the normal way but i thought this was just a fun trick that's it for today if you're new here consider subscribing and if you want to continue down the devops rabbit hole consider checking out one of these other videos from my channel and remember just keep building